Welcome to the Beardy Heads Book Club, a place where a pretentious hipster and a serial curmudgeon agree to disagree about just about everything. And now, without further ado, here they are. Hi, I'm Jake, and I'm a pretentious hipster. I'm Steven, and I'm just an asshole. I, I'm, I'm not going to disagree with you there. That's true. Uh, so yeah, Fucker. episode two, Infinite Jest. Is it uh, two? It's Already? episode two. <laughs> Already. Oh, right, we're getting these out so promptly. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm I, very, just, I'm, I just love this book. It's so good. I can't put it down. It's so great. It's so it's it's it, it's amazing. Uh, so yeah. So we read up to what was it? Page four eighty. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it was like after footnote one eighty something. I think one eighty one. Yes. <clears throat> well. Uh. So. God. Where do we start? Well, I'm going to be honest with you. I don't know what the fuck happened. All I know is there was a game of Risk. And oh, that's it. the Eschaton. Okay, so sure. Uh, yeah, the Eschaton. Es- the Esca. The Eschaton. The Esca. The Eschaton. It's, it's something like that. Uh, so yeah, the Eschaton. Uh, that to me was a really interesting little story right there because it's very telling about like what's happening in the rest of the book. Would you uh, care to retell it for me? <laughs> Uh, sure. So, Eschaton <laughs> is, it's a game that the kids at the Tennis Academy play, and basically they are, uh, oh, sorry. Uh, basically they are, they're like hitting tennis balls at each other, but they also have a computer, and the computer predicts, like, Fallout, and casualties and stuff like this and it's like this ancient computer and it still does all this crazy stuff and uh so they're all they're all hitting these balls back and forth at each other they're playing this game and then like this argument breaks out uh god who who was the kid i get is it shat i want to say as the kid's name who runs the computer i'm not sure there's definitely like shat and some other kids and then like michael pemulus and hal are like sitting off on the bleachers anyways so they're doing this game where they're lobbing tennis balls at each other and then like they are uh lobbing tennis balls at each other and then they're uh you know doing the computer calculations and stuff like that and uh <clears throat> it really like to me there's like this sort of thing going on um it sort of mirrors like nuclear war and how nuclear war changed everything except since they're doing nuclear war this is like the representation of like the new war the nuclear war like getting taken over because this new weapon is around uh which is in this in, in this universe is infinite jets it's the movie and yeah. like the the movie is really like the new weapon the nuclear war like dis- it, that disrupts nuclear war right and like nuclear war is disrupted so like that's vi- that's sort of like uh whenever they're pushing the computer away like they get in that fist fight right uh, over the interpretation of the results and then the one kid is like i'm just not gonna i'm just changing the rules like i'm just we've always done it this way i'm just gonna do it a different way for whatever goddamn reason and then they end up getting in a fist fight the fucking computer goes over boom on the side right uh computer goes over on its side boom gets eliminated uh that's like nuclear war is being eliminated by Infinite Jest. Huh. <laughs> yeah. See all I remember mean? is they, they all lobbed a bunch of tennis balls at one kid. and But there's like this crazy... Yeah, they all lob tennis balls at the one kid and they're just like pelting the shit out of them and everybody feels bad about it. And like there's like this weird underlying subtext and it's kind of subtle you can't pick up. And oh, God damn it, I can't keep doing this. <laughs> oh fuck beans i cannot keep doing this see what happened to you just now has already happened to me and it's it's funny watching someone else have it happen oh my god is 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 this is this what it's like to not be able to finish a book i uh i can read any book uh not I... this one <laughs> i can it's try not... it again later okay like i'm i'm not wrong right this isn't a bad book 
No, it's not. He's, uh, I mean, he's a good writer. It's just, uh, uh. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's one way of putting it. It's just my, like my biggest holy complaint. Crap. My biggest complaint was the first two hundred what two hundred fifty pages. Two hundred yeah, two hundred fifty pages was great. Like made sense mostly and ended on a great note at the end of that two fifty. I was like, fuck yeah! And then. And no. Oh man! At the end, when he has that conversation, yeah, yeah that we was, even talked about that in the last podcast. That was we were amazing. Like, we we're so excited! Like after we read up to that point, it was like boom. Okay, the plot is moving. Like it is yeah. booking down the fucking thing, and like the le- the next two hundred pages, it's just like oh, here goes Hal. He's sneaking <laughs> off to smoke weed again. Oh, yeah. and now we're back in the room where the thing is going, and like <laughs> we're gonna talk at length about the crazy interdependence day film that's made with puppets by a retarded boy (laughs) (laughs) yeah and i I just want to point out i just want to point this out i want to say this i'm not making any of this up i'm not making this into like i'm not resorting to hyperbole to like get belly laughs out of steve like i want to do like literally that is what happens in the book <laughs> it spends 20 pages summarizing a film that was made by what i i am assuming is some sort of differently abled child oh my gosh yeah i uh, uh i didn't i didn't care for it uh to the fact where it's just like his tangents were just uh, a little too tangenty it just went a little crazy Oh, uh, he does. He does have a tendency to go off the rails, and the footnotes, de- like at first, they sort of reeled it in because you could just be like, "Oh, okay." Like most of the footnotes, you could skip; they don't really mean anything, and you could tell it was like uh, it would give it would fill in information and everything. After a while, the footnotes got fucking ridiculous. Like here is three pages. Oh God, what was it? There was one. It was like three pages, and it was just talking about. Something completely mundane. And, and even now, I can't remember it, but I remember reading it, and I was like, why is this... Like, this has to be relevant later, right? And oh. I, I, don't, I don't know that it is. <laughs> it's, none of it is. None of I it mean, is. Okay, so here's the question. Um, are we going to try it again? Uh, yeah, sometime? I wouldn't mind trying it again later. Uh, I would really prefer if we just, you know, didn't plan it and just... Well, not like didn't plan it, like didn't really announce it on the podcast or, or what if we just, you know, just read it all at once and then just do one episode on it. And then maybe we, uh, we just, you know, one week we're like, oh, uh, next week is infinite jest. So, and then we've already done it. Like, I don't know. I just don't want to, I didn't like spending a lot of time on it. Like after two weeks, I was like, yeah, I would have been done with this book by now, but it's you're not reading for like pleasure you're reading to get like that weird uh you're you're reading it's like reading for school like you can't yeah. derive the same pleasure from it for some no, reason and i'm, I'm feeling it. you there and especially something this fucking nuanced man yeah and like it's... i've taken like college level writing courses and i've read you know college level r- literature classes and stuff and this was like this was Head head and shoulders, one of the hardest things I've ever had to read. Uh, head and shoulders, like the shampoo. Yes. <coughs> I don't know if you've ever read any Umberto Eco. Uh, he wrote The Name of the Rose. Oh my gosh. I think you ever I've read, read that. The Name of the Rose is another book that is like insane to get through because it's basically written as a as a real history of a murder in a monastery and the guy who goes to investigate it. And, like, the guy is, like, this, he's this, um, oh, I can't remember the name of him, uh, but he's one of those guys who's, like, a big fan of Francis Bacon, and he uses, like, bacon logic, uh, which is not as delicious as it sounds, it's just, like, a, I think that's the philosophical term. It's basically, he solves puzzles using these logic, this logic, Uh and, like, the whole book is about him solving these puzzles in the monastery, and the book is so fucking difficult to get through because it's all written like a medieval monk is taking it down. But like the story is so fascinating. And I get the feeling that it's the same thing here. It's like the story 
every once in a while, like the clouds part and the sun comes out and I get yeah. a little bit of story. And I really like those moments, but like, I don't get enough of them for right now. Anyway, I had that issue with an Alistair Reynolds book. Uh, he, I mean, somebody recommended it to me. It's some hard ass science fiction is that he, as they called it. And, uh, I just was like, mm. I got a little bit into it and I was like, I don't know what the fuck's going on because the way he writes, it's, it's like, I don't know, it's like a made-up language, made-up shit, and you're just like, I don't, I have no context clues at all of what the fuck they're saying, and it was like, only every now and then I'm like, oh, they're doing this, okay. Yeah. That was, that was something I wish I would have known as I was reading it, so. Mm. I kind of feel like Infinite Jest is one of those books, too, that you almost have to read twice. Yeah, I really think, or, you know, read it and have a really good wiki. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean that's true. Like you really want to pick up on a lot of the subtleties and stuff. But I mean, I could I could see like a lot of people have that book they read every year. Like Maria reads uh, Golden Compass every December. That's or a good book. Something like that. Yeah, yeah the first one. The, I, I th- I'd say that I like the the second and third one. Well, I only read uh, the first one. That's the only one oh, I can okay. speak for. <laughs> so you just haven't you just haven't read them? It's not that you yeah. think they're good. Okay. No. Uh, no, they're all great books. Like it's not like Mockingjay, which is a pile of shit. It's sort of nice because, like, they are science fiction books, young adult science fiction books that don't, like, talk down to you. And they yeah. are science fiction. Like, it comes off like fantasy, but, like... I like sort the movie. Of, oh, the, the movie comes off way more fantasy than the books do. The book is definitely, like, oh, it's a fantasy, but then, like, you sort of rub the, pe- you, you rub the patina away, and it's yeah. like, oh, no, this is fucking science fiction. What the... Yeah. What? what? This is about quantum physics and shit. Well, I liked it because Daniel Craig was in it, so. Yeah, so, so was Nicole Kidman. Yeah, she's she she does it for me sometimes. She she's the little girl's mother. Anyways, uh, not as much as Daniel spoil... Craig does it for me sometimes, <laughs> right? Oh, yeah, you did just spoil something. I just spoil it. Dare I just you spoil, spoil like Golden a... Compass for everybody. <laughs> a book that's well over ten years old. Oh, is it over ten years old? It falls in the ten year rule then. I could have sworn I remember it at the at my middle school library. Definitely. I think so. I think you might be right. I'm always right. Yeah, it was, <laughs> I think it was like 98 or something. Shut up. Uh, <laughs> uh, so, if it adjusts, yeah, we gave up. Uh, that's the bottom line. Um, and it sucks because I never give up on books except for, well, that one Alistair Reynolds book I talked about earlier because I didn't feel like learning while reading a science fiction book. Not all I mean, of them I need to learn with. That's the same way with me. Like, I never... This is what, that's why I was like, this is what it feels like to give up on a book. Like, I will read almost every book through to the bitter end. You know? Like, yeah. I almost never put a book down. It makes me concerned. Uh, of course, this is almost a change of subject, but uh, I want to. I really, really want to read Anathem because you recommended it. But I have a feeling it's similar to uh, that Alice oh. book where it's like made up shit. Made yeah. up language. I'm like, I gotta learn. It's like I need a glossary. Like the first time I read Dune when I was a kid, I had the fucking glossary uh, next to me because I was like, "What's that? Let me look it up." Oh, it's that. Yeah, Anathem is super similar to Infinite Jest in a lot of ways, and definitely similar to what you're talking about. But the good thing about Anathem is it takes place not in like a different, like a, a completely different universe. But one that's really, really similar to ours. It's just it just has oh. these like subtle changes. It's an alternate universe, but it's similar enough to ours that it's around. Oh, it's a tablet, and the oh, other that's... ones must be cell phones. And you kind of yeah. Like, what the fuck is Maud Dib? Yeah, Dune was definitely what's a like Tom that. Jabbar. I need to reread that because I read that in middle school, and it was my favorite book for years afterwards and i need to read that as adult steven i think we should do a read through of like the first three dune books i mean let's not oh, yeah. do the whole series because like that's something oh. we're saving for later but uh, we could do the whole series i don't care well i i haven't heard great things about the series i'll just I, all i've heard good about is dune and uh the second one dune messiah uh, i was gonna say as long as it's written by frank herbert i think it's pretty decent i'd be interested to read them just because frank herbert like he was interested in a lot of the same things as me like tripping balls well, on mushrooms and stuff. Prequel ones, uh, I think it was House of Treaties and yeah, but okay. uh, it wasn't. It wasn't and... Yeah, well, he's. I mean, he's written like eight thousand of them now, but um, I mean, they're okay. 
Uh, well, they're not, they're not like amazing. That's what I'm saying. Is like uh, he died, and he had all of the notes and stuff, uh, and then yeah. his son started writing them and like kind of ghostwriting them. Like he was yeah. kind of hiring writers, but he was like advising them, and they would turn out like these three writer books that apparently weren't very good. Um, yeah. But I've never read them, so I don't know. I mean, it could be like the Ender books, where it's like everybody says the Shadow series is terrible. Like I always hear, and there are things I don't like about it, certainly. But it's my I favorite. The Shadow, I, yeah, I was going to say I thought the Shadow series was your favorite. It of, is uh, of the Orson because I love the fuck out Ender's Game is my favorite science fiction novel. I mean, it's pretty close up there for me. I would say Anathem beats it out easily. And I um, even like I even liked the movie. Yeah. I wasn't I wasn't terribly disappointed with the movie. There was a little things I was like, ah, I'm not comfortable with this, but I was like, yeah, it's pretty good. It's a weird one. Yeah, it's definitely a weird one. Yeah, but we should we should do that in a series sometime. It might be fun. Oh, I'd love to read all the Orson Scott Card, the good science fiction novels he wrote. Oh, I was talking about Dune. I was that year. That's right. We were talking about Orson Scott Card. I zoned out for a minute there, and I was thinking about Dune and like. Walking in a weird rhythm, so to not disturb the worm. Oh walk yeah, without oh, rhythm. God damn, that's right. Won't that's awake right. the worm. Oh, and uh, another one I've always wanted to read was the Mars trilogy by uh, Tim Stanley Robinson. Yes, I hear awesome I have, things about those books. I bought that years ago, and I just never got around to reading them. And I think it's one of those where I was like, I'm gonna wait till I have an adult brain, and so. I have sort of one now, so I think it's about time. Yeah, I could see that. There's there's a couple. John Scalzi is kind of like that, too. I'm like, I'm kind of waiting to read John Scalzi because I don't want to be in school. Like, I feel like I'm really oh, going to yeah, have yeah, to. Yeah. Your school's going to distract the shit out of you if you want to read anything for pleasure. I was going to say, that's also why I couldn't finish Infinite Jest, was getting overwhelmed with school, and, like, it's been a tough year at home this year, you know? Like, I just could not keep my head in that book. It was too much energy. Yeah, I I don't blame you. I was having a hard time, and I don't do anything but work and yeah. come home. <laughs> So I couldn't uh, imagine you doing it. <laughs> I couldn't that's... imagine how you managed. It. Oh, dude! Like pretty much every free moment I had, it was like try to read a page, yeah. and maybe I'll get halfway down it. And I'm a fast fucking reader. Like, oh, I I'm am too. No... And it was and it was hard for me to fucking like because I like to just sit down for a couple hours and just bang it out. And that book is it's it's really hard to to sit and focus sometimes because a lot of it doesn't you know, makes sense and you're not really paying attention. And I very ADD when I read that book and I zone out and I'm like, uh, I don't know what I was doing. I'd like read the same page over and over again. And I was like, uh, I feel like reading something else. And I did. I read other books that were entertaining and made sense. Yes. <laughs> uh, yeah. I, I, and it took me forever just because like school kept getting in the way and then like you would be behind. And I think that's another reason we just kind of gave up is we both just got so behind. Yeah, I couldn't. Like, I couldn't even tell you what happened in the last chunk. Right, of it. it was just like, well, let's just throw in the towel now because if we're this behind, we're not enjoying it. And why, why do this if we're not going to enjoy it? So yeah. that said, like, what's 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 the next book? It sounds like something we're both going to enjoy. Goosebumps. Oh, tell me we are doing. Don't stay out of the basement. Oh God damn! I love that fucking book. That's my that, favorite one, dude. That and say cheese and die. Say cheese and die was pretty great. The dummy ones, <laughs> not even the dummy, not the living dummy. Yeah, or monster blood, the one monster with the giant Bo- hamster on the airplane. Monster blood was pretty cool. Uh, the theme park one where they were in the theme oh, park. Oh, that was number sixteen. I remember had, I bought that in an airport, and it had the crazy twist ending. Yeah, or what where was it was the... like, oh, you're hallucinating the theme park or whatever. Or what it, was the one where the and he you're, goes you're to... actually in a medieval, yeah, whatever. Where he go? Where's the one where he went to camp and all that horrible shits happen, and then you come to find out, uh, you're on a different planet altogether, buddy. And it's camp like camp werewolf. It's like look, there's Earth up there in the sky, and you're like, what? <laughs> yeah, I remember as a kid, I was like, what? That doesn't make so, sense. So, so stay out of the basement. Uh, yeah. by R. L. Stein. Uh, Classic. Since the, since the Goosebumps movie just came out, uh, we figured we'd do something a little bit topical. Um. And then we're going to read the rest of the Goosebumps series in sequential order. 
Yeah, and you're going to listen to it on this podcast. Yeah. I'm just kidding. I don't think we're going to do Goosebumps. <laughs> I would, if we did, that would be a separate podcast. <laughs> we both know that no, neither of us could get past the first episode before we laughed ourselves to tears just making Gersperms jokes. Gersperms! <laughs> Gers, Gersperms. Yeah, I mean, you remember what it was like when Gersperms was like a oh thing before it was annoying. I laughed it was, so hard. <laughs> oh my god. I think we sent Gersperms pictures <laughs> back and forth. <laughs> For like three weeks or something, it was it was like texting each other. <laughs> oh my god, it was insane. So oh my god. we couldn't do. It. And somebody's doing a Goosebumps podcast, aren't they? We can't steal that idea. Yeah. Well, I I would listen to that. I think I might listen to that. Actually, I might read the books too. <laughs> I would too, because I mean, it takes like two hours of your time to read one. Right, of those fucking it's things. like it's like a little brochure. Mean, Right, they're like double spaced in twenty pages. You know, <laughs> it doesn't take long to get through it. And you know, it makes me upset because he made so much money, and he would like fart one of those out every month, along with like Fear Street and all that other shit he wrote. Dude, and he R- is just fucking loaded now. R.L. Stein figured out like way before almost anybody else, like horror series, yeah. horror series. People were yeah. writing young adult horror. People were writing young adult series. Nobody yeah. was writing young adult horror series. Yeah, he, he was uh, like him and Christopher he figured Pike. Out the formula. Yeah, Christopher yes. Pike. I remember him. Yeah. Fucking what was the name of that book? Silent Night. No, not Silent Night, Deadly Night. It was the one about the guy who sets up a camera. He works at a. V- okay, so the book is somebody will write in and they'll tell me which one it was. Uh, this is the plot <laughs> of the book. The guy works in a VCR factory. He's a high school kid, um, and he figures out how to take. a a vcr timer and set it up with a camera so that he can take pictures of of girls changing in the locker room nice he like goes and sets it up and he like breaks into the school at night to go get the film and stuff and uh somebody's in there so he like hides and they leave and he goes and gets the film developed and it's like he accidentally captured some chick getting murdered nice like the that whole sounds book. Like a, that sounds like the plot to a, that Clint Eastwood movie that was based off of a David Baldacci book, oh, uh, Absolute it, Power. It does sound like Absolute yeah, Power. Yeah, because he's, he's a yeah he's a he's a crook and he broke into their house and he's like oh shit they're coming home to fuck and let me hide in this closet and all of a sudden somebody gets stabbed at the fucking letter opener and you're like dude this is cool. David Baldacci's like that though. Like David, that's, yeah. that's sort of how he is. But yeah, dude, this one was. Uh... I remember now, this book very Now I want to read this Christopher Pike book. <laughs> I'll find out which one it is. I remember the opening or the the, the 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 cover had it was a camera taking a picture, but it was like in the lens was a girl like turning around and screaming. It was nice. Like, um but it was the reason I remember this book is because it had like the best high school library, middle school library, teenage masturbation fodder like that's racy enough to give you give you a little ironwood boner but not like nice. so bad they wouldn't put it in a library so it was just <laughs> like funny nuts were busted over this book like i feel like that's yeah. where my love of literature really came from was it was really at a catholic school the only acceptable erotica that you could ingest see my school library they uh they pretty much had everything i don't think anybody noticed or maybe the this maybe the staff just didn't you know pay attention but we had Stephen King and uh, I think it was Hearts in Atlantis, and it had a oh, pretty yeah. good uh, had a pretty good boating scene, and yeah, that was that was a fun time. <laughs> uh, it was the other one that it was like, oh, how the fuck is this in the library? Yeah, it's great when you're a teenager reading it, and yeah. not so great when you're an adult with kids reading it, and you're just <laughs> you're like, like oh, I'm never letting my kids out of the house again. Yep, you're just like, well, they just ran a train on a 13-year-old girl. And... I mean, they I, I, they do, like, knowing what we know about Stephen King, like, and, yeah. like, she sex did it and the calm... role in the tent, yeah. She did it to calm them because they were lost in the sewer. Well, but... it was, it was, it was bringing the tent back together. Yeah. Like, it was, it was, like, sex is a powerful magic in, in the Dark Tower universe, that's a Dark Tower book. Oh, the Ted. That, yes. yes. Think about it, because what's her name yes. does the same thing in the Dark Tower books. Yes, like she, she bangs does. Roland. 
Yes. Well, no, she doesn't bang Roland. She Dada doesn't. The, Roland, Dada Roland doesn't bang bangs Roland. the demon. She bangs the demon, and then she bangs the demon after it changed sexes and got pregnant with, Mo- uh, what's his name, Mordecai? or no? Mordecai, yeah. Yeah. Oh, God, I love those fucking books. Oh, man. Uh, so what's Also, the, so- spoilers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Don't, if you're listening to this, sorry, we just spoiled like five different book series for you, including <laughs> Goosebumps. Eh, that's what we do. Yeah. I kind of feel like most of these are pretty popular books. Uh, so, so let's let's talk a little bit about Man in the High Castle. Um, so, Man in the High Castle just got picked up for an Amazon series. Or it didn't just get picked up; it just got released. Uh, got picked up last year for an Amazon series. The pilot came out in February, and I watched it. That's all I've seen, and it gave me like such hope for the future of sci-fi on TV. Oh, yeah, it's a good show. I've, I'm halfway done with it, and it's amazing. I haven't watched it yet because I'm waiting to read the book first because the book looks like a quick read. And then I will probably go ahead and uh, watch the show. I'm very excited. I do. My understanding is the show is a little different from the books. Like that they've oh, yeah, taken fine. out some stuff in the books, uh, which I'm fine with. Like maybe, you know, I don't know. Maybe we'll do a I like it. The I like podcast. It when they're yeah. I like it when they're different. I don't really like them to be literally the same thing. <laughs> no. I already read it. the book. I, I read the book. I already had that experience. I, I want. I kind of want to see someone's interpretation. But you know, if they like drastically change something, I'm like, well, that kind of changes the whole tone of everything. I kind of feel like that's also keeping more in tone with the things we plan to read in the future too. Because we've talked yeah. a little bit about what we plan to read on the podcast, and like Infinite just stuck out like a sore thumb to me. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, that's because it's like the. The most batshit insane book to even start on. Yeah. Yeah, so, like, when we talked about doing this part podcast, like, me and Steve talked about, like, everything's gonna have a theme. I pick a book, he, or he picks a book, I pick a book, whatever. And, like, this theme was, I'll get get around to it someday. And now I'm just like, I don't think now is the day to get around to it. So, that's part of why that's happening. Uh, yeah. But, yeah, Man of the High Castle. Um, so, for those of you who don't know, it's a novel where... The Nazis win World War II, uh, or the Axis powers win World War II. Uh, the U.S. is invaded uh, by Japan in Germany, and now they're having like political strife trying to divvy it up. Um, and meanwhile, everybody is either living in the Imperial Japanese States or the uh, um, United... What, what is it? The S- United Socialist States uh, of America or something? I don't know what something. they call it. Basically, well, they, they never really Nazi specified America. it on the show. Yeah, the Nazi and the Nazis of have basically, yeah, but the Nazis pretty much have east. They're you know, east side. Yeah, they've got they've the, got the, the east Japs coast. Are, so they've got New York down on down. They yeah, got Japs Florida have west, and and then there's the central states, the mountain states or whatever that are. I guess it's a neutral zone. That's how it is in the, the show. At uh, least. Yeah, the Rocky so. Mountain neutral zone, which is on the show. Um, I think it is also in the books because I think it figures into stuff. Um, so yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. I you really cannot, like alternate history. You definitely cannot be Jewish or black and live on the East Coast. <laughs> At least that's what they do on the show. On which ones? On the show, you can definitely not be Jewish or black. Oh yeah, they just uh, well, you can't be. Thing? You can't be Jewish or black anywhere, really, and uh, especially in the German one. The Japs they don't really give a shit, but if you're Jewish. It's kind of the law to die. <laughs> that's that's pretty fucked. Oh, well, you haven't watched the show. I'm not going to really spoil too much. Yeah, of it, don't you don't spoil the show. I mean, we could spoil books on the podcast all we want. Because the, the show is the people show is just fantastic. not listen. But I I want the show to not be spoiled for me. For my the show purposes. is fantastic. Good. And I, 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 need I need to finish to it. I might I might need I might finish it on the airplane when I'm because I'm gonna be out of town next week. I might have to. Uh... Yeah, I, I I I haven't started it yet, but I'll probably blow through it this week. I'm definitely going to read all of the Man in the High Castle on the airplane ride. <laughs> oh yeah, god damn, going to Taiwan, man. Yeah, Go, I'm, I'm going to have fun. I guess. Hopefully, I can find it, me a young boy, uh, a lady boy, a nice little young lady boy. No, go I on, Hank. Work. Don't you want a little brother sister? 
you know what else I'm gonna watch on the airplane? <laughs> Fucking Venture Brothers. Oh yeah, I'm about a season behind too. Uh, oh, have you God. not seen? Oh, we're we're getting off on a tangent, but if yeah, you just a little. If you haven't seen the sixth season of Venture Brothers, it's probably it's it's definitely not the funniest, but it may be like the best well, story wise. The, s- the second was the funniest. Yeah, like second and never... third. His kids die in the end of the first one, and he's like off partying, and they're like, "You have to come back." He's like, "No, I'm free." Mm-hmm. <laughs> Love that shit. Smoking oh, opium and all that other stuff. It's such a good show. Anyways, Venture oh. Brothers, blah blah blah. Um, let's meet back here on the twenty second of December. Yeah, and uh, we'll talk about Man in the High Castle. That'll give us plenty of time to read the whole thing. And and will we? Uh, it'll be our Christmas episode where oh. we talk about where we talk about Nazi stuff. <laughs> oh. <laughs> hey. Of course, that's a, that like sounds this. like some that sounds like some shit we do. It's like Merry Christmas. Now let's talk about Nazis. <laughs> I d- yes, yes, I love this idea. <laughs> I'm so on board with this. I mean, you know the introduction I said I'm a horrible asshole. I also have like the most fucked up sense of humor. So, it's okay. I mean, Fair. I literally yeah. think about everything is funny. Yeah, is so if you haven't sometimes. already figured it out from the game cast and from the previous book cast, like don't fucking listen to this show if you're easily offended. I should probably should have said that at the beginning. Yeah, but... and and you know when I when I say things if if anybody ever gets offended, I'm not meaning it personally to offend you it's it's just a joke i mean joke is i mean humor is you know subjective it's if you find it funny or you don't but it's not like you need to go make a statement if if you don't like what i said just don't laugh at it (laughs) right just shut the hell up and move on yeah just don't just be like oh that wasn't funny and then just going swipe left on beardy heads and (laughs) get the fuck on with your existence you know i mean i'm not i'm not I don't hate anybody in particular out there, so don't take it personal. Uh, I think that about wraps it up for uh, Infinite Jest, episode two. And Thank God. Final episode. <laughs> <laughs> for now. For now, to until, be continued. But... Until we're big people uh, with more adult brains. The Revenge of Infinite Jest. Yeah, I think I need, to, I think I need about another <laughs> 20 years. Infinite Jest strikes back. Yeah, your, your attack of the jest. Oh god. The phantom jest. F- fucking stop it. <laughs> <laughs> Just Jar Jar what's that kid's name? Uh Jar Jar Mario. It's Marmar Binks. <laughs> square uh, head, little square headed uh, retarded retarded rabbit person. Oh Jake. Uh, what? Marmar Binks. Have you felt my gum jabar? <laughs> How do you like it? <laughs> How do you like my gum jabar? Oh, I really... Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, I want to find that. And for one of your... for You should read that for, for one of your... Uh, for one of your performance art pieces. Should, oh, my God. put well, that over it. I might, I might get sued if I read too much of a book that has a copy. Print. Something like Jane Austen or... Uh, yeah, so, or public domain, something in the public domain. Wizard Call of Oz. Cthulhu. Oh. Craft could be Lovecraft could be pretty great. But anyways, uh, I'm, <laughs> I'm just, just really having fun talking about this. Go ahead, kid. I just I just want to record it. <laughs> I want to read Little Women and play Grand Theft Auto. Is that so wrong? <laughs> Keep sucking That's... that dick. I said it last night signing off. But anyways, uh, I'm Jake. Eat it, eat it hard. I'm Steven. Closing statement. Uh, we're the Beardy Heads. Thank you for yeah. coming in. Fuck Infinite Jest. You've been listening to another great episode of Beardy Heads Book Club. Our theme was provided by the amazingly talented Dwayne Andrews. Find more music like it at DwayneAndrews.ca. Don't forget to find the Beardy Heads on Twitter, Facebook, Twitch, YouTube, and Instagram. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you again real soon.